Hey guys, in my last layout update number 25, I promised to make a review of the turntable that I have. As you can see, this is the Ross turntable. It's 34 inch, so it would fit my big boys. Uh, I just wanted to go over a couple of uh, tips that I had for helping you guys program it if you have it and use it. So far, I've had really no problems with it. I, I do like it a lot. The way that you install it is kind of interesting. I, I can't lift it up to show you right now because I have track obviously screwed down, but there's a lip right here. So it actually, the, the homosote I have is up to the edge of the turntable itself. Underneath there's a piece of plywood and that plywood goes underneath the turntable itself. And that's what's supporting the turntable. It's pretty strong, you can push it down. It does move a little bit, there's a little give in the plywood, but otherwise it's a pretty good design the way that they did it. Um, one recommendation I will tell you guys is when you are, if you have this turntable and you're installing the track, make sure that it is secure. In testing, I noticed that it moves and what will happen is it could get caught on one of your uh, tracks that you have around your layout and it will stop the turntable. Another thing which is good is the bridge itself, and I'm not going to do this, but the bridge itself will move. As you can see how it moves a little bit there. If you push it enough, it'll click into the next position. The beauty about that is in case you are off after you've measured your tracks and lined them up correctly, if you're off by a little bit, you can move the bridge just one click and it should line up. That happened to me at one point when I was installing it. I must have bumped it and move the bridge a little bit and everything all the tracks that I had installed did not line up when you're installing your track what they recommend is that you put the bridge to a location where you want it to be so say it's one of the, this track right here and you line the bridge up with it then you move the bridge past it to make sure that it goes past it it doesn't hit they recommend about one eighth clearance between the end of the bridge itself and the track uh, once you've done that they want you to go past it once one direction and then past it the other direction to make sure you don't clip it with the edge right here. Um, luckily enough, the first time I did it, I didn't clip any of the tracks and everything seemed to work fine. The other thing is they tell you that you have the choice between 0 and 47. 48 is not going to be a track. And what I mean by numbers is here's the indexing right there. You type in the number that you want the track or the bridge to turn to to the corresponding track. As you can see right now, I've got it lined up with number 12. So that is that track right there. Now what I did for the time being, uh, until I build a board, is I just wrote everything down right here. So you can see the numbers that correspond to the roundhouse and the outside and inside tracks. And one of the cool features with this turntable is we're on number 12 right now, which is pointing to that track right there. So if you look here at my diagram, number 12 and number 36 would line up. So if I wanted to turn that engine around, right now it's pointed at 12. If I type in 36, wait for it to come up, hit the top button, that will spin the turntable. And now you can see it's lined up in the opposite direction. Now a cool feature which I learned about this turntable is if you press the reverse button, which is right here by the green light, what it's going to do, it's going to reverse the entire bridge back to where it was. Now you'll see in a second the engine's going to be pointed at the track it was when we first started. And there you have it. It's lined up perfectly. So that's a very cool option. If you guys have this turntable and you don't know about it, I would definitely make use of that option. It, it would stop you from you know, marking the numbers down somewhere. You could just reverse it. Me personally, even though I know that, I still want to know the numbers in the event that something goes wrong, I still have the numbers written down. Now that was the one part which was a, a little bit... Um, uh, difficult is probably the best word. Figuring out the numbers. It's really just trial by error. Uh, with the numbers here, for example, let's just say that I chose number 
uh, 42 when I first put the turntable in. So you type in 42, hit the top button, and this turntable just starts to spin. Now, in my case, I don't actually have a track for 42. So if I had put the turntable in, I had installed it, the train would, this, there you go, the bridge would just turn to this location and you can see it's not lined up with the track. So now I would say, okay, well, you know what? 42 is not one that I want to use, but maybe 41 is. So you try 41. And there you go. Now that's pretty much how you'd figure out what number your track is. So after you've got 41 figured out, then you can say, okay, well, 41 was a track, 42, what about 43? There you go. Again, there is no track there. So that's pretty much how you figure it out. And then to reverse it, like I showed you before, you can either hit the reverse button or you can turn around and then just figure out what number corresponds to turn the engine around in the opposite direction. These are just some quick tips and um, I, I don't want to call it a running session, but a, an operating session of the, the turntable. I hope it's helped you guys out. I hope you would enjoyed it. Uh, be on the lookout for some new videos coming soon and please leave some comments below. Thank you for watching and welcome to all my new subscribers.